Feels like just when we think the news of the nerdy variety can't get any bigger, a soon-to-be hermit on a twin sun desert planet jumps down with an iconic two-word phrase and says, hold my lightsaber. There's been a lot of interesting news stories cropping up and I've been keeping my eye on all the new interesting developments happening across the fandom multiverse. With that in mind, hop on my banter as I count down the 10 biggest news stories of the past week in a brand new episode of Nerd News. And I know I'm late with last week's news, but I was in the home stretch of college and didn't want to fail. But you know something? You're failing right now as we speak because you haven't subscribed to the channel, liked the video, or hit the bell to join the Nerd Notification Squad. So do those things right now and become a winner. Number 10, Scarlet Witch going solo. The Scarlet Witch is the most powerful entity in the current MCU, especially since she might even have a House of M moment in Multiverse of Fandas to finally bring in mutant kind. She has been such a dominant and destructive force leading up to her evolving into her final form in the finale of WandaVision that, according to Marvel Insider, Elizabeth Olsen has signed a new contract with Marvel Studios, which includes a solo movie. This is purely speculation as of right now since Marvel nor Disney have confirmed anything, but after what looks to be an intense showcase of the Scarlet Witch's full strength in Multiverse of Madness, Olsen signing on for future projects would not be unheard of. Plus, I feel like she has more to do with Agatha who is also getting her own spin-off and is yet to meet a certain devil which haunts the dreams of Eric Voss. Number 9. Kratos Invades Amazon God of War is up on my list of favourite video game franchises of all time, with the games dating back to the PS3 and has been making a comeback on more recent consoles. But it looks as though Kratos looks to expand his reach as it has been reported that a new God of War live action show has been greenlit at Amazon. God of War will be PlayStation's third live action project with the first being Uncharted with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, with their next project being The Last of Us with Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. Who do you want to see portray Kratos in this new live action project? Let me know in the comments. My pick is of course, Danny DeVito. Number 8. Thor 4 Unsure Congratulations are in order for the God of Thunder since he is the first MCU hero to get a fourth solo film, especially since he is neither dead nor resigned to being a Disney Plus TV show, but it is being reported that Thor Love and Thunder is not fully completed. In a recent interview with Variety, Cork Watiti said that Thor Love and Thunder isn't finished, with him saying, it comes out July, so probably like end of June, like a day before the premiere, that's how we do it. Fans are eagerly awaiting to get a taste of what's in store for Big Lebowski turned Hulk Hogan's next installment, especially since we are expected to get a live action version of Jane Foster's Mighty Thor character from the comics, along with Christian Bale's MCU debut as Gore the God Butcher. So we'll just have to wait until Taika deems us worthy. Number 7. DC equals dates change. 2022 is the year of DC, with the Batman making bank at the box office, with Warner Brothers promoting their upcoming DC projects being released throughout the year. However, while other companies such as Marvel and Disney seem to be on track with their scheduled releases, Warner Brothers has decided to delay a lot of their movies. The movies which were moved included DC's League of Super Pets being slated for June 29th, 2022, Black Adam now slated for October 21st, 2022, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom slated for March 17th, 2023, and a flash being slated for June 23rd, 2023. However, while all of these have been moved back, Shazam! Theory of the Gods has replaced Aquaman to be released on December 16th, 2022, which means it's going up against Avatar 2. Gosh, I wonder who's going to win that box office battle. Side note, that's also my lovely sister's birthday, so take your pick, sis. Number 6. Oz the Corrupt and Powerful If you've already seen The Batman, the movie that made me admit it was equally the best comic book movie ever next to No Way Home, still can't believe I said those words, you will have seen Colin Farrell's amazing performance as Oswald Cobblepot the Penguin. And yes, that is Colin Farrell, can't you tell? Apparently his performance was so great that Matt Reeves has announced Farrell will dawn the prosthetics once more as a Penguin rated R spin-off series is coming to HBO Max later down the line. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the show will focus on Oz as he, according to Farrell himself, rises through the darkened ranks to become the Penguin. It will be good to get him back on the streets of Gotham for a little madness and a little mayhem. Farrell's portrayal of the Batman villain was great to watch, and I have no doubts he will do great in his own show. Number 5. Marvelous Updates and a Familiar Face Last Wednesday was Disney's Investors Day event, where they announced what is up and coming with the various projects they have in development. While this year's event may have been less about showcasing new footage for those projects, that doesn't mean we didn't get any new information. In Marvel news, Disney confirmed the release of some of the upcoming shows with Moon Knight coming out on March 30th, with Miss Marvel to be slated to premiere next in summer 2022, along with She-Hulk in fall 2022. Star Wars had their own treat for the fans, but you're probably thinking, what can be bigger than our first look at Tom Hanks as Geppetto in the live-action Pinocchio? Well, viewer, don't you worry, we'll get there. 
Number four, the Sean Levy trilogy. With Disney's acquisition of Fox, they not only got the rights to X-Men, but also to everyone's favorite fourth wall breaking anti-hero, Deadpool, played by the perfectly cast Mint Mobile owner, Ryan the Green Lantern Reynolds. I'm looking forward to see how Deadpool fares in the MCU and what fourth wall references he looks to make in his next solo film, which is underway at Marvel Studios. They've even begun inserting Deadpool into the MCU with Ryan Reynolds uploading a new video of Deadpool with Korg and oh boy, a duo that looks to be. While this product is definitely on the hush end of things in terms of what we know, it has been announced that Sean Levy, the man who directed the amazing Free Guy and the new Netflix movie The Adam Project, was confirmed to be directing Deadpool 3. It would be great to see who else Ryan can bring into this project. Give us Hugh Jackman as Wolverine one last time, please and thank you. Number three, Deadpool vs Proxima Midnight. Sticking with the mark with the mouth, it appears that Deadpool was supposed to be making his MCU debut a lot earlier, more specifically in Shang-Chi and The Legends of the Ten Rings against Thanos' own child, Proxima Midnight. In newly released concept art by Shang-Chi senior concept illustrator Andrew Kim, the imagery depicts Deadpool and Proxima squaring off in the fight club where we saw Wong fight Abomination and Shang-Chi fight his sister Zai Ling. While this is merely concept art with their appearances unknown in terms of if they were originally planned, this would have been an interesting duel. However, with Midnight Dead and Deadpool not yet in the MCU, how Marvel would have pulled this off would have been interesting to see. The only reasoning I can think of is multiversal chaos ensued in Spider-Man No Way Home since this does take place around then, but I guess we'll never know. Number 2. Rada Alada Another standout character from the Batman other than the Penguin was the Riddler, played by Paul Dano. This next part is leading into slight spoilers, so watch your own risk or proceed to number one by going to this timestamp right here. At the end of the Batman, the post credit sequence shows the words goodbye being typed along with the website www.radaalada.com proceeding after it, a site which was shown in the film. This isn't just a random link however, as when you type it in and click it, you are then taken to a site which first begins loading and then shows a percentage bar and a link called click for your reward, which shows another cipher from the Riddler which translates to you think I'm finished, but perhaps you don't know the full truth. Every ending is a new beginning. Something is coming. The countdown itself increased every three hours and went up 20% each day. And now that Friday has passed, we have the answer. When you revisit the site, you will find a link which downloads this file, which is filled with images and clippings from the Riddler's stash house with info about his victims, the Wayne family, and his own personal diary. When I revisited the site, there was also a new cipher, which when translated read, Gotham loves a comeback which were not only lines uttered at the end of the movie, but also hints that the Riddler isn't gone for good. And number one, that's, you know, I can't say it the way he does. Take it away, you want. That's fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yes, it is, you legend. After months of waiting, Disney finally gave us a trailer for the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series coming to Disney Plus on May 25th, 2022, which is significant because it will be the 45th anniversary since the release of A New Hope when we first met Old Man Ben and it is glorious. The returning score from John Williams, including the chilling Duel of the Fates, young Luke Skywalker, the Inquisitors being the secondary antagonist to the greater threat, which is none other than Darth Vader played once again by Hayden Christensen, hopefully voiced by James Earl Jones, to have a conflict with Obi-Wan 10 years after being left on Mustafar. Like this trailer is up there with the way Ewan McGregor announced he would be returning to the role, it is just that good. I am beyond pumped to see my favorite Star Wars character return, excited to see Hayden and Ewan back together, but most of all, intrigued about how Ewan turns into Alec Guinness since this takes place nine years before A New Hope, but the fact that we're getting this show makes up for it. And that wraps up this episode of Nerd News. Which piece of news are you most excited to see? Let me know in the comments down below, and may the force be with you.